Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about spark plugs, everybody's favorite thing. Uh, so I have all kinds of spark plugs laid out right here today and some of these are racing spark plugs and some are street spark plugs that you just put in your stock daily driver. Um, everybody knows that spark plugs come in various heat ranges but uh, what a lot of people don't know is there is a difference between a racing spark plug and a street spark plug. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, and we're going to run a few ohm tests with that. And you probably notice that little dwell meter right there. I'm going to show you how to check dwell on your HEI after we go through these spark plugs. And then there'll be a little bonus at the end. Um, I'll save that for a minute. So let me get the camera set up. And uh, we'll go into spark plugs a little bit. I saw some questions online, and uh, it's a video I've been meaning to do for a while. Um, so we're going to jump right into it in just a second. Hang tight. Okay, so when you go buy spark plugs, there's basically two types. You have a stock street plug. This would be uh, this is Autolite 26. This is a very common plug used in the small block Chevrolet. So it's just standard everyday old street plug. These plugs have a resistor in them. And I'll show you this, something about that in a second. This is a race plug. I don't know if this number will show up, but it's an auto light. And this number you see starts with an AR. That's auto light racing. This is a race plug. This has no resistor. So resistor, no resistor. Uh, so what's the difference there? Obviously in your street car you want to run a, run a resistor. Uh, resistor is going to help for RF interference. Uh, so yeah, you don't want any of that with all your electronics and your radio and all the buzzing and stuff. In a race car we don't have to worry about all that so you can run a, a race plug. Um, this has less resistance obviously so more of the spark energy is going to make it to the tip and going to fire the uh, fuel mixture off. So, when you buy some plugs, I don't do this for stock plugs, I do this for race plugs, but I'm just going to show you how you can test that real quick. If you touch one end of your electrode, or one end of your tester to the electrode, and the other end just to the end of the spark plug, uh, you set this on ohms, and let's see what kind of ohms we have here. This is 6.2. or 6.2 K ohms. So it's 6,000 ohms, 5,000 ohms is what it's showing right there. Just slightest bit of movement makes this change. So over 5,000 ohms of resistance in this plug right here. That's a regular old street plug. And a raised plug, check the difference out here. There's no resistor in this plug. And it, this is a used plug. So just trying to get through this carbon on this is tricky. Oh, come on, it's not going to work now. Of course, because i got the video camera running. Well, we're going we're gonna to roll with it. Hang tight. That number was not right. <laughs> okay, see the little tiny bit of resistance there? It's almost nothing. These are not K ohms, by the way. So the deal is... This plug has been ran, so this I really need to clean this tip a little bit. I probably should have done that before I did this video, but I wanted to test the plug as it came out. So even as we're looking right there, that little teeny tiny number, 74 ohms, that 130 is a, that's the wrong number there. Uh, shoot. We'll do some more of these that have no resistor, and you'll you'll get a better feel for it. But basically, with no resistor, come on now. This is ridiculous. Let's pick another one. <laughs> I'm tired of it. I wanted to show you this plug here anyway. I'll show you the, another difference. So let's test this one. There's the electrode, and there's that. 2.3 ohms. I mean, there's very little resistance with these. Uh, the difference between these two spark plugs, by the way, is this is a standard reach plug. This is an extended reach plug. The extended reach plug sits into the chamber just a little bit further than a standard reach plug. Uh, let me put that right there where we can see. So if you have big dome pistons and you don't have a lot of clearance, 
you might want to run the standard plug. I've ran both of these before. Same heat range, same gap, same everything, just to experiment. I didn't notice anything whatsoever different in my ET or the way my car ran. It was just fine. Um, matter of fact, while I'm talking about that, a lot of guys want to index their spark plugs when they're racing. And so there's two ways to index plugs. Some people say find the ground strap and put a line there and put it in your engine this way. Move this over. Some guys say put it in this way, the pistons here. Some guys say put it in this way. Quite honestly, it doesn't matter. I've tried this way, I've tried that way. Again, I tried back to back to back passes over almost a full year of experimenting with about 22 different spark plugs. Uh, that was an expensive test. But the only real reason you'd want to um, index your spark plugs, if again, if you're running dome pistons, got a big old dome coming up. If your dome is big enough, you don't have a lot of room, that dome can actually close your gap up. I mean, I, that, that's pretty that's pretty tight. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure it can happen. So then you'd want to just index your plug going this way, this being the piston. So that's my story on index and plugs. I don't think it's worth the hassle. Uh, now, if you're especially if you're a bracket racer or whatever, it, who cares? Um, now, if you're stock and super stock luminary racing, yeah, I mean every every ounce of power you can get, more power to you. So that's the difference in those plugs. But there again, race plug, very little resistance. A street plug, a whole bunch of resistance, over 5,000 ohms of resistance. Um, a reason you want to check all of your plugs, for a street car, again, I wouldn't be too concerned. But a friend of mine was tuning up, uh, he's got a pretty performancey little car going on. He bought some brand new spark plugs and put these things in and um, it still didn't run very well. So these in, these plugs were just put in and fired up, and it didn't run very well. So we brought them over, and we tested them all. Apparently, the box got dropped. You see there's an X on this one. I'm going to test this one here first. This is an NGK. By the way, these plugs are all light racing plugs. This is all light street plug. This is an NGK street plug, pretty much. Let's check the ohms on this thing. Let me put this here back in the way. Can we see it? Yep. Okay. Let's see if this will cooperate with us. So over 5,000 ohms is, is 5.17 K ohms. So that's 5,000 ohms. So is this good for a race car? Eh, not really. I wouldn't run it. You can if you want. Um, here's another one. This is brand new out of the box. The same package that came in right there. Check this out. Absolutely nothing. It don't even try to phase the scale. So right out of the box, this plug was bad. There's a resistor inside here. Again, this is a street plug. This box got dropped at some point, I'm going to guess. And it broke that resistor. So sometimes you'll do a tune-up. You'll put brand new plugs in, and you'll have a mysterious engine miss. You don't know why. I'd find out what cylinder is missing, pull that plug out, and check it. You probably have a broken resistor, or at least a broken carbon inside there. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, here's another plug. This is AC Delco. This is just a factory plug. Again, this will have a resistor in it. And this is, come on, baby, 18,000 K ohm, 18,000 ohms, 18.45 K ohms. That's 18,000 ohms. Yeah, that's great for a street car, I guess. Um, here's an interesting one. Here's a, I think this is an iridium. AC Delco. Let's check that thing out. Uh, come on. 4,000. Yeah, 4.3K ohms. So that's 4,000 ohms on that one. Uh, here's an interesting one right here. So this plug is kind of cool. It's the NGK V Power. So the cool thing about these plugs, obviously the, the tip, the big thing here is it has a, a V cut in it. It's supposed to be all that. We're going to plug all these into the distributor machine. We'll turn it on and see if there's any difference in spark by visual tests, more rudimentary testing. But this plug right here, the NGK V power, is a street strip plug. So it does have a resistor in it, but 
It's a low resistance resistor, so check this out. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me start over right there. I don't know what I was thinking. It's like when I turn the camera on, my brain takes a break. I don't know what's going on there. So I just talked about these NGK V Power Spark plugs about having a resistor. This one does not have a resistor. This is the raised plug. I already know that. I don't know why my brain didn't think of that for the video, but whatever. Uh, they make a resistor and a non-resistor version in the V-Power. This is the resistor version. Uh, and you can tell that when you read the part number, BKR6E. I don't know if that shows up. That R stands for resistor. Uh, this is a raised version. There is no resistor in it. So, um, yeah, that's what I meant to say. Uh, something else you want to keep in mind for uh, a race car you want a low resistance spark plug wire and a low or no resistance spark plug to get more spark energy on your street car you're going to run a 5000 plus ohm resistance spark plug plus a very high resistance factory wire that's fine again for a street car but for a race car you want the most spark energy you can possibly get so anyway, I just wanted to clear that up because there again, uh, brain farts happen only when I hit the record button. Okay, well, back to our regularly scheduled program. Check this out. Well, that ain't right. Okay, I guess that is right. Oh, hang on a second. Check that out. I mean, let me verify. I don't recall seeing that number. I could be wrong. I've tested a whole bunch of plugs lately. So yeah, believe it or not, these have a resistor in them, but it's a low resistance. These are high resistance resistors in these stock plugs. So there's a difference there. So that's a good street strip plug. These are supposed to have a resistor anyway. That's what it says. It acts like it doesn't. 0.3 ohms, holy crap. Yeah, that's really good. I don't believe these have a resistor. The the information sheet says it does, but I don't know. That's still a great plug, though. I love those plugs. And this is an interesting one. This is just one that was in our batch. Um, this auto light racing plug again. So this one will test that part right there. Oh, yeah, that's wrong. Four ohms. Pretty good. Not too shabby. Um, oh, and then we're going to see the difference between this plug right here that has this kind of end on it. There we go. She focused now. Kind of cool plug. And then this is one of the V-Powers. I just broke the ground strap off. Just to, I was playing with this. This is one of my test plugs from years ago. It's always going to spark right here because this is where i broke the ground strap off of i tried to file it the best i can but it keeps on arc right there they actually make plugs like this that you can buy they're really expensive they're called um yeah i don't remember right now but they're really expensive if you wanted to try this in your race car don't do this in a street car and i know one guy that they're they're old school he broke the straps off ground straps off all his plugs and he runs his race car that way I, it works i'm too chicken to try it <laughs> i like a regular spark plug you know with a ground strap and everything i usually run my gaps pretty tight on my race car around 30 to 35 thou um but that's just me so there's that um uh, i got another test i want to show you hang on one second all you HEI guys will recognize these right here these are the little bushings that go inside the distributor cap underneath the coil there's two kinds of bushings. There's a stock bushing. Uh, it's black and brass, like this. And there's a low resistance bushing. It's supposed to be these brass ones. So you can visually identify these real quick if you want the low resistance bushing. Uh, why do you need a low resistance bushing? Well, I'll tell you. If you ever have an issue where your distributor cap and your rotor melt together, it melts a hole in here, that means uh, you're running a pretty high powered ignition with a very high resistance bushing. You need to change this bushing to a low resistance bushing. It'll take the heat away and it won't melt your rotors. So that's why you run that. Uh, 
that's not now this difference isn't a fail safe just because this is black with the bronze end doesn't mean it's stock and just because this is all brass doesn't mean it's always low resistance i'll show you why uh, i always thought that but when i was going to make this video i started doing some testing and uh, I, I taught myself something but you can actually check check the resistance on these bushings right here too this bushing here has uh, over 4,000 ohms of resistance. Black bushing with a bronze tip. Again, black bushing with a bronze tip. Let's see if that tip will show up in, on here. This is supposed to be a, a high resistance bushing. These are a little tricky to test. Whoa, come on. Over 5,000 ohms of resistance. Here's an all brass bushing. Seventeen ohms of resistance. Uh, come on. That's wrong. If I had three hands, that'd be great. So that's the low resistance bushing. Here's one that is all black. So this is supposedly, just by the looks of it, because it's an all black bushing, this is a standard high resistance bushing, right? Check this out. 36 ohms of resistance. That's not K ohms, that's, that's ohms. And it dropped down to what, 14? I just can't get exactly on this thing. But about 30 ohms of resistance. That's pretty dang good. And then here's another brass bushing. This is low resistance. Forty, thirty, twenty-three, something like that. That's low resistance. Again, checking these right here. Let's check that one. These are K ohms. Four thousand, so four point five nine K ohms. So these two are definitely standard high resistance bushings i would never use those anyway a stock car yes put these in your stock ignition systems i run or i have a race car so i run these right here i always run a low resistance bushing uh, now that if you ever buy a cap and rotor it will come with these and if you want to make sure what you're putting in your car that's how you can test that just on meter that real quick and that's a quick little how to on that so like I said, there's a difference in spark plugs and a difference in these bushings, and it's all to do with resistance. If you have too much resistance, resistance is heat, and resistance also impedes the flow of spark through your spark plug. You can get less spark energy. Will you notice it? I don't know, probably not. But in your race car, if you're looking for every ounce of power you can get out of it, you want to run a race plug. Another difference with race plugs is uh, guys with race cars run a colder plug well this is a standard an autolite 26 a standard small block chevy spark plug from back in the day i don't think they use them nowadays uh, if you want to go colder you can go to a 25 or even a 24 so let's say you use a 24 that's pretty cold for the street but a cold stock plug is not even that's hotter than the hottest race plug i hope i said that right um so that's why I run race plugs. NGK uh, are a little bit easier to read. What's the difference between NGK and Autolite? Quite honestly, I ran both of these in my race car. Um, let me tell you, one year, I ran the same combination for many years. So I wanted to experiment with spark plugs to see what kind of differences I could see. So I ran an Autolite and an NGK. I ran a seven and an eight. And then the corresponding heat range in the auto light, uh, a cold on the colder. And then I ran a standard tip and an extended tip. Again, in both brands. So I, I'm not lying. I went through like 22 sets of spark plugs. It was very expensive to do this test, but I wanted to see which spark plug was the best. I see online all the time. All these guys saying this spark plug's better than that spark plug. I never run these spark plugs or whatever. They throw all these names and brands out. Well, quite honestly, 
in my experience, there was absolutely zero difference. The only thing I did notice, and I tried two gaps. Uh, out of all these spark plugs, when I put them in, I started at a 30 gap, and then I opened them up to a 45 gap. I wanted a really wide margin so I could physically see if there was anything going on. Uh, it ran fine both ways. However, with a tighter gap, I run a 35, 30 or 35 right now. With a tighter gap, my engine seemed to idle a little bit better. That's the only difference I noticed. Another thing I like, the difference between Autolite and NGK, is you can see that the Autolite racing plug has a cut back ground strap. If you read Smokey Unix book or some of these performance books, one of their ways for performance, to gain a little performance, is to cut the ground strap back. Well, Autolite does that for you already. Again, Autolite Racing Plug. It has to be Autolite Racing Plug, AR. So they have the ground strap cut back for you already. Uh, according to uh, some of the, I, I read some stuff from NASCAR crew chief some time ago, pretty smart guy. He said they don't gap spark plugs because it weakens the attachment point and the ground strap can break off into your engine. <laughs> I don't know, I've never had that happen, but with these cutback ground straps, I just quickly run a gauge down them just to see where they are. But I don't try to move them. They're usually right around 30 or 32, so I just leave it right where they are. I'm, I'm happy with that. These right here, I, I gap those all the time. I don't care. So anyway, that's, that's up to you, whatever you want to run. Everybody has their favorite brand. Um, I haven't found anyone that likes Champion yet, so... Uh, anyone out there who likes champions, chime in, let me know. I, I wouldn't dog anything. I mean, whatever. If it works for you, works for your combination, then it works, right? The gimmicky plugs. I don't know. I call this a gimmick plug. This is pretty cool. This is very similar to this right here. Now, if this would have been a standard reach bar plug, it would have been more similar to this. So I can see the benefits to this plug. This would be kind of cool. And again, this is a race plug too, so uh, let me see if we can see the number on that. Does it show up? I'm looking through the camera, I still can't see it. 3910X. Uh, I thought I had some split fire spark plugs. Have y'all seen those? They have the ground strap that comes off and it V's off. Um, we couldn't find them. I looked all over my garage, my buddy's garage. We couldn't find those. I wanted to test them. That would have been pretty cool. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these plugs. I uh, hook them all up to my machine. I'm not going to put them in the little holders right here because that's a big pain in my rear. So I'm just going to line them up across here. And we'll see if there's a... Let's see what the spark looks like. Let's have nothing, no fancy test, just rudimentary. I just want to see what the spark looks like. So hang tight and I'll get this set up. Okay, they're kind of set up so you can see them. So here's that one special spark plug right there. Here's the one, and I'll, I'll pick all these up individually. Here's the one without a ground strap. Here's that brand new spark plug that my buddy put in. Uh, this one has a resistor in it. Here's the other brand new spark plug with the X on it that was broken. I'm going to show you how that one just not going to fire. This is the old uh, AC Delco plug. I didn't do an ohm test on this on video, but it's four or 5,000 ohms just like the rest of them. Here's the Iridium plug. We'll see what that looks like. Here's the stock Autolite 26 spark plug. And this is uh, another Autolite Racing spark plug right there. So, let's fire this thing up and take a look. See that one right there? Doesn't even try to spark. Well, it'll spark uh, through the housing, but when I ground it, there is no spark coming through that spark plug. So that's an engine miss waiting to happen. Uh, let's see if I can pick these up without getting electrocuted. This is always fun. Oh, matter of fact, let's just look at these real quick. Let's see if I can get a good view of those two especially. Kind of cool. Let me crank this RPM up a little bit. Oh, 
vibrating. Okay, so uh, let's see which one I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get shocked by first. This one. Pretty cool. I've been shocked so many times by this thing. It's not even funny. This is the no ground strap. So this is what it's doing to the top of your piston. That's pretty. That's pretty badass. So. Again, I think this would be better if it was the standard reach, not the extended reach. Kind of like this one. Oh boy, I'm going to get shocked. Yep, I'm, I'm going to get shocked. Let me turn that off. I don't want to get shocked. Not on camera, I'll squeal. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, check this thing out. Whoa! That's pretty wicked. Hey, I wonder if we can make a spark plug. Spark the spark plug. Now. Nah. Right. I thought that was cool. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of cool. That's badass. I, I don't know. I'd probably try those. They were probably expensive. And then there's nothing special here. Stock plug. Here's our iridium. Let's see what this thing is going to do. Oh, boy. Hello, hello, ho! There's Iridium for you right there, boys. Kinda cool. And the Autolite Racing Plug. Hey, let go, let go! Wow, wait a minute. I thought I put a burn spot on my plate, but I don't think that's a burn spot. No. Wow. Okay, let me turn it off for I really electrocute myself. Holy moly. So there's all that. Um, anyway, so that's kind of cool stuff. Uh, so I was going to tell you, I was going to show you how to check the uh, dwell on your HEI. Most people don't even know your HEI has dwell, but when you run a module, like this unit right here modules had a certain amount of dwell built into them your coil has to have time to build up the charge right just like your points uh, except with HEIs they have they have like a variable dwell so these aren't you don't set your dwell at 30 degrees like you do with points these have a variable dwell so they will start low and as RPM increases the dwell will go up uh, and they will maintain when these modules go bad Everybody knows when your spark goes out, you don't have any spark, you throw the module away, you replace it, you're good to go. Well, modules can fail multiple different ways. One way they can fail is a dwell will stick in a certain spot and it won't advance, it, it won't increase or decrease anymore. So as you're driving down the road, this happened in my truck, I could drive around town all day long, no problem. As soon as I try to get on a freeway and get over 55 miles an hour, it would not do it. I, no way it just pop and bang and i couldn't figure out what the crap was going on i thought it was fuel issues it took me quite some time i thought wait a minute i'm gonna check my dwell so i'm gonna show you how to do that uh give me a second so i can set this back up i'm gonna hook all these spark plugs back up because i don't want to get electrocuted on especially on camera it's embarrassing hang tight Whoops. Okay, it's all set up now. So, uh, to check your dwell, grab your dwell meter because I know everyone has one in their toolbox, right? I've got a couple of them actually. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's focusing. There's only two leads, very simple ground wire. Let me ground it. Hook your other lead up to your tack terminal. Well, I can't see because the camera's in the way. And then you crank up your engine, and you'll see the the dwell. Let's see if that scale. Oops, is that focusing? Come on, baby. But anyway, you'll see the needle move. So the dwell is about 25 degrees, and as RPM increases, 
there's 30 degrees and it's getting about 32 degrees and backs off slightly they see how this dwell varies and it's variable there's another word for that it's on the article but it's the same thing it's not fixed anyway so that's a normal working module and like I say again when they go bad this dwell might stick at 17 you never know just it'll just stick somewhere so depending on where it sticks you'll have drivability issues the issues you'll have is most likely uh, popping and backfiring out the exhaust if you have backfiring out if you have some backfiring going on that's that's ignition related anyway but no one thinks this a module so like i say it took me quite a while to figure that out because i kept thinking that was a lean pop or some weird thing going on um so that's kind of it i told you i was going to show you tell you something at the end well i i couldn't wait i messed up it was these bushing things so these bushings are you just don't want to overlook them especially when you're running the high power ignition system in your race car a six series ignition system you can probably get away with the stock bushing you can try it but if you start melting the rotor then uh, that means you're running too much resistance swap over to a low resistance bushing you can get these from summit they're msd low resistance bushings you can get them from anywhere amazon too i think so not a big deal they're cheap and easy to change um, it'll come with a little rubber bushing spacer thing. it'll come with one of these um, right here so you pop this in your cap you pop this over it you drop your coil on and you're good to go uh, some people put dialect degrees or heat sink on it you don't need to that's only for modules so i put them on dry call of the day put that in your cap so anyway that's all i got for you hope that helps someone any questions let me know and thanks for watching